Everybody's reaction when they first see science on a sphere is different. Many of us are perplexed as to why things look the way they are, why, why the scale is the way it is. Many of us are just awestruck, almost inspired or humbled by what we see, and we just want to be there. To watch the Earth rotate on this sphere and be in its presence, there is something awe-inspiring or humbling about being in that perspective and seeing that perspective that uh, is really unlike anything else. So the last couple of days have been really exciting here. Uh, Monday, the company, BCW Viz, which creates and installs the Science on a Sphere, they arrived and began setting up. So Joe, if you line the notch up, everyone else just pick a screw hole. As you can see, there's posts that were installed in the ceiling. Lights were adjusted so that they wouldn't impede the, the lighting of the sphere. The projectors were installed. But all of that had to be perfectly measured. You probably knew this, but the average temperature in the Kinnathar Peninsula is the same as here. Yeah. Essentially, the science on a sphere represents what you would see if you were on the International Space Station in orbit looking back at the Earth. And so it's very hard as an observer standing at the surface of the Earth looking out at space to understand your place. The sphere allows you to kind of remove that idea of standing at the surface and instead seeing things holistically, whether it's a weather system or a hurricane moving or where it's understanding how temperature patterns are changing through time, it allows you to have a more holistic view of the Earth system. So right now there's over 700 data sets out there. I see this as a great opportunity for student learning. Some of the opportunity though that is, I think, the most interesting about Science on a Sphere is that you can display real-time data. Over the last month or so, you can see the date right now on the Sphere. So this is about as close as you're going to get to live. And I want to draw your attention to this Cinnabon swirl that's approaching the west coast of Asia and you can actually see a very vivid eye in that typhoon this morning. So when we take these geostationary images, we take them generally every... So we can look at real-time radar imagery, real-time clouds, and allows us to see things that are happening instantaneously. You know, our mission, vision, and values are centered around student success and finding new ways to connect and engage students. Science on a Sphere is a great example of using a technology solution to bring a different way of looking at the world to our students so that they are aware of new technologies that they might run into in, in the real world. So these are a lot of our graduate students for the Department of Earth, Atmosphere and Environment focused on meteorology and atmospheric science. Many of them are doing research in severe weather, extreme weather and climate change. It would be great if we could project some of that model data onto the science on a sphere and really get that 3D picture of what's going on. Being atmospheric science students here uh, in the States, we're always looking at what's going on here in our area, correct, right? Um, and it, it's always really cool to see uh, weather phenomena and patterns in the rest of the world. So the only other science on a sphere in this region is at the Museum of Science and Industry. All right, let's see if you can tell me what this is. A baseball. A baseball, yeah. <laughs> Students, school children who, from this area who may not have a chance to go into Chicago. And really exciting them about research in general. I think that's one of the key things that the library can be doing. I really hope that other disciplines will find ways, creative ways, to use the sphere. You could look at bird migrations. You can overlay all commercial aircraft flying around the world right now. What you're looking at right now is actually recent earthquakes. Anything that can be projected in Google Earth or on a sphere can be projected on science on a sphere. So it's really not just for weather and climate science. It's really a visualization tool for anything out of two-dimensional space. If you think about it, there are a lot of opportunities for departments like history to show uh, change over time, such 
things like urbanization or things like city growth or population growth over time. Many other departments use spatial information, whether it's at the country level or at the city level. Being able to see it in the three dimensions and being able to see change over time and space is really incredible. If you've never seen Science on a Sphere, never visited, I strongly encourage you to just come and get that experience, that visual of putting everything in perspective for you and really removing you from the surface of the Earth for a few minutes to try to understand what it would look like. And when you do, you'll kind of, I think, understand just how small we are, getting the big perspective of you know, the entire globe as projected by Science on a Sphere.